Hey everyone, this lesson is on an approach to acute diarrhea. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about a method of determining different types of diarrhea and the causes of those types of acute diarrhea. So what is diarrhea? So there's actually three definitions for diarrhea. The first definition is any increased frequency of bowel movements or decreased consistency of stool in a 24 hour time period. So this definition is a bit vague. There are really no numbers to quantify this. So really it's any increased frequency of bowel movements. So any increase from the baseline of a person or a decreased consistency. So it could be a bit watery or softer than usual. And this occurs in a 24 hour time period. The second definition is a bit more precise. The second definition states that diarrhea is at least 200 grams of dry weight of stool per day. Now this can be difficult to quantify and to actually state that you've got diarrhea because many times people aren't going to weigh their dry weight of stool per day. So this can be a difficult definition to use. And the third definition is having at least three bowel movements per day. So this is very similar to the first definition of an increased frequency. And it's a bit easier to use because it's got a number associated with it. So you know you've got at least three bowel movements per day. But this definition of diarrhea may not be easy to use either because some individuals at their baseline may have three bowel movements normally per day and normal bowel movements for them. So this can be difficult to use as well. So usually you'll see a combination of these types of definitions. So once someone has diarrhea defined by one of these or all of these definitions, then you have to go a little bit further. We split diarrhea up by the amount of time someone's been having diarrhea. So we know that we have to have diarrhea for at least an entire 24 hour period or at least an entire day according to those three definitions. But we have to go a little bit further. So we break diarrhea down into acute and chronic diarrhea. So acute diarrhea is having diarrhea or an issue of diarrhea for less than two weeks. Chronic diarrhea is having diarrhea for more than two weeks. So this is where we draw the line with regards to acute and chronic. So there's some definitions like subacute diarrhea, and sometimes you might see that term being used for diarrhea between two to four weeks. And then sometimes you might see definitions of chronic diarrhea more than four weeks, but most of the time you're gonna see these types of definitions. Acute diarrhea, less than two weeks. Chronic diarrhea, more than two weeks. And why do we do that? Well, with regards to acute diarrhea, if it's something new and it's been only going on for less than two weeks, it's more often caused by an infectious cause. So a bacteria, a virus, or a protozoa. With regards to chronic diarrhea, if it's been going on for more than two weeks, it's more likely to be a chronic medical condition like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or irritable bowel syndrome. So it's important to have these categories, but categorizing diarrhea in this way can have some issues as well because sometimes you might see an infectious cause of diarrhea lasting more than two weeks, so it would be considered chronic diarrhea. And sometimes you might see a medical condition like Crohn's just starting and it could be causing an acute diarrhea. So it could just be the initial presentation of a chronic medical condition. So again, these categories aren't perfect, but this is what we usually work with. So if an individual has had diarrhea for less than two weeks, they have acute diarrhea. And once they have acute diarrhea, we can look at a multitude of other factors in that person's life to determine the cause. And one of those is traveling. So their travel history, have they been anywhere outside the country or in the country? And have they been exposed to infectious agents that could be causing their acute diarrhea? Another one is sick contact. So are other people in their life that they're close to having similar type of diarrhea? Another thing to look at to determine the cause of acute diarrhea is recent food intake. Perhaps an individual has eaten somewhere that there's been a food poisoning outbreak. So it's important to see what types of food they have eaten. We also look at recent hospitalization because they could have picked up some infectious cause in the hospital. And tied in with this is recent antibiotic use. So an antibiotic could cause acute diarrhea due to an adverse reaction or because the antibiotic is leading to some type of infection that is causing the acute diarrhea. We also ask about past medical history. So even though this is acute diarrhea less than two weeks, we also ask about have they had issues with diarrhea in the past? So they might have irritable bowel syndrome and then have a break and then they eat certain foods and they're also getting this acute diarrhea presentation. But really it's part of their chronic past medical history of irritable bowel syndrome. 
Another factor in determining the cause of acute diarrhea is looking at the symptom course. So what that means is that how have the symptoms of acute diarrhea changed over time? Have they gotten better? Have they gotten worse? Or have they stayed the same? This can help us delineate the cause of the acute diarrhea as well. And another category that we look at is medication use. So you might be wondering about this. We've already talked about antibiotic use, but with medication use, this is more specific to laxatives. Have they been taking laxative or are they abusing laxatives to a point where they're getting acute diarrhea? And that could easily explain why they're having diarrhea in the first place. So these categories, when we look at these different factors, this can all help us determine the cause of the acute diarrhea. So what are some of the symptoms of acute diarrhea? One of them is abdominal pain, and we call this cramps. And this can be either diffuse abdominal pain or it could be more localized. We may or may not have a fever. And the diarrhea can be watery or non-watery, or it can be bloody or non-bloody. So how do we really distinguish what causes these types of symptoms? So we actually look at breaking down the causes of symptoms into two categories. One of them is enterotoxic or non-inflammatory, and the other category is invasive or inflammatory. So we break it down into these two categories. And both of these categories have different pathogenic mechanisms, and I'm going to talk about those pathogenic mechanisms briefly here. So with regards to the enterotoxic category, the mechanism or the pathogenic mechanism is usually what happens is there's a malabsorption of nutrients and or some ions, or there's an efflux of ions into the gastrointestinal lumen. And there's usually a toxin associated with the infectious cause leading to an efflux of ions, usually chloride ions, into the gastrointestinal lumen. And that draws water out of gastrointestinal cells, leading to watery diarrhea. So that is the enterotoxic pathogenic mechanism. What about the invasive or inflammatory pathogenic mechanism? So in invasive acute diarrhea, the pathogenesis occurs as follows. An infectious agent, oftentimes a bacteria, will penetrate and invade into the gastrointestinal lining. That will lead to damage and destruction of gastrointestinal cells, and it can often cause breakage of blood vessels, leading to bloody diarrhea. And because it's invading into the cells and into the underlying tissue, the body responds, leading to white blood cells being recruited into the area, inflammation of the gastrointestinal area, and usually leading to a fever as well. So now that we know the pathogenic mechanism, it becomes easy to remember the symptoms associated with each category. So with regards to enterotoxic non-inflammatory causes, we see watery diarrhea because again, we have a malabsorption of nutrients or an efflux of ions into the gastrointestinal lumen leading to water being expelled into the gastrointestinal lumen causing watery diarrhea. There's oftentimes no fever present. Remember that it is usually toxin-mediated. There's no invasion of microorganisms into the gastrointestinal cells, so there's no inflammation. There's no infection of the underlying tissue, so there's no fever. And because there's no invasion to the tissue, no fever, we don't see an increase in white blood cell count. We don't see leukocytosis. And we also don't see fecal white blood cells either in enterotoxic acute diarrhea. And in the invasive or inflammatory category of causes, we see bloody diarrhea because those infectious agents are invading or penetrating into the gastrointestinal cells, leading to destruction and bleeding from some micro microvasculature. So that causes bloody diarrhea. We see a fever being present because oftentimes the bacteria are invading into the gastrointestinal cells. It causes an immune-mediated response. Immune cells come in and rush into the area and because there's more immune cells, there's an inflammatory mediators leading to fever being present. There's an infection of the underlying tissue. We also see leukocytosis, an increase in white blood cell count because of the same reason. We also see fecal white blood cells as well. And we also see a couple of other things. Uh, we also see lactoferrin being positive. So if you measure lactoferrin in invasive or inflammatory acute diarrhea, it's positive. And we can also see the sensation of tenesmus in these individuals who have invasive acute diarrhea. So tenesmus is the sensation of an incomplete evacuation. So those are the symptoms.
of invasive inflammatory acute diarrhea, as opposed to the enterotoxic acute diarrhea, where we see watery diarrhea, but we don't really see other signs of local inflammation or systemic infection. So what are some of the actual causes of acute diarrhea? Now that we know those two broad categories of causes, we can look at the individual causes within those two categories. So with regards to enterotoxic or non-inflammatory acute diarrhea, we see causes like enterotoxic E. coli or ETEC. Enterotoxic E. coli is the most common cause of traveler's diarrhea. So oftentimes you will see this type of bacteria infecting individuals who have traveled to third world countries or developing nations. And it's easy to remember enterotoxic E. coli is in the category of enterotoxic because it's the same word. So it's easy to remember. Another cause is Clostridium difficile. So Clostridium difficile is associated with recent antibiotic use, especially antibiotics like clindamycin. So what happens is when an individual takes an antibiotic like clindamycin, it really kills a lot of the normal gut flora, leaving Clostridium difficile to flourish. And when that Clostridium difficile flourishes, we get issues with enterotoxic acute diarrhea. We can also see Vibrio cholerae being a cause of enterotoxic acute diarrhea. This is found in a contaminated water. So if you're drinking contaminated waters, oftentimes in impoverished areas, and if you're eating vegetables that have been cleaned with contaminated waters or certain shellfish can also have this as well, you can get this infection. Another cause of enterotoxic acute diarrhea is Giardia lamblia. So Giardia lamblia is a protozoal parasite. We see this in individuals who go camping. If they drink fresh water out in nature in, in their camping area, they can often get infected with this protozoa. The water sometimes is referred to as beaver water, and because of that, sometimes Giardia lamblia infections are referred to as beaver fever. But really the word for Giardia lamblia infection is giardiasis. And with Giardia lamblia infections, they're a little different in the sense that they can be prolonged, so they can be longer than two weeks. So oftentimes you may see a chronic diarrhea presentation and you might think it's a chronic medical condition, but it's actually Giardia lamblia. So it's always important to ask about traveling and camping and those types of questions. Another cause of intertoxic acute diarrhea is Staphylococcus aureus. So many of you have heard of Staphylococcus aureus before in different settings, like staph infections or MRSA, but it can also be a cause of intertoxic acute diarrhea. So what happens is certain foods might have some Staphylococcus aureus in them. If those foods are left out, for a period of time, that Staphylococcus aureus can produce toxins in that food. And if you were to eat that food and then consume the Staphylococcus aureus and the toxins produced by that bacteria, you can get what we colloquially refer to as food poisoning. So this is a cause of enterotoxic acute diarrhea. And examples of types of food we see this occurring in are what we call proteinaceous foods. And one example given is often egg salad. So this is where it's important to not eat things that are left out at room temperature for long periods of time because they could contain toxins produced by Staphylococcus aureus. Another cause is Bacillus cereus. So we find Bacillus cereus in uncooked or reheated rice. So in rice, there are spores of Bacillus cereus. So if that rice is not cooked adequately, those spores can survive and Bacillus cereus can proliferate in the rice leading to a intratoxic acute diarrhea. So it's important to always cook rice adequately and make sure that when you're reheating rice, it's reheated adequately as well. So as you can see, a lot of causes of intratoxic acute diarrhea are bacteria. One exception is Giardia lamblia, which is a protozoa. But there are also some viruses that can cause enterotoxic acute diarrhea as well. These include norovirus, rotavirus, and cytomegalovirus, or CMV. So those are the causes of enterotoxic or non-inflammatory acute diarrhea. But what about the causes of invasive or inflammatory acute diarrhea? One of the causes of invasive acute diarrhea is salmonella. And we see salmonella in uncooked or undercooked poultry or chicken. And this can cause bloody diarrhea and possibly a fever as well. We can also see Shigella being a cause of invasive 
diarrhea as well. We find Shigella in raw vegetables, unpasteurized dairy, and undercooked or uncooked poultry or chicken. With regards to Shigella, it is the Shiga toxin. Shiga toxin causes a lot of damage to the gastrointestinal epithelial cells, leading to a bloody diarrhea as well. Another cause is enterohemorrhagic E. coli. So you can see right in its name, hemorrhagic, it's going to be bloody diarrhea. This is 0157H7, and we see this in uncooked or undercooked meat. And we oftentimes hear about outbreaks of E. coli in certain restaurants. Well, this is the one, generally speaking, 0157H7. And we see this, again, in undercooked meat oftentimes. And what's interesting here about this type of E. coli is that it also has Shiga toxin, so it received the genetic code for Shiga toxin from Shigella. And what is both common with regards to Shigella and enterohemorrhagic E. coli is that they are both associated with an increased risk of hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS. Another cause is Campylobacter jejuni. Again, we see this in uncooked or undercooked poultry. And again, this can be another cause of bloody diarrhea. It doesn't necessarily have to be bloody diarrhea, but it could be. And we can also see it being passed between people. This is very infectious between one individual to another. So one individual could have gotten it from uncooked or undercooked poultry, but it can pass between multiple people just being in the same household. So again, this is a very infectious agent. And another cause of invasive acute diarrhea is entamoeba histolytica. This is also a protozoa, it's an amoeba, and we find this occurring more often in immunocompromised patients, so patients with AIDS or patients on chronic steroids. I have a whole lesson on entamoeba histolytica infections if you want more information on other symptoms and other complications of an infection with this type of protozoa. It can also cause things like liver abscesses. So again, the two main categories you want to break acute diarrhea down into with regards to causes are enterotoxic or non-inflammatory and invasive or inflammatory. So with regards to enterotoxic non-inflammatory causes, we have enterotoxic E. coli, easy to remember because it's the same word, enterotoxic. We have Clostridium difficile, Vibrio cholerae, Giardia lamblia, Staphylococcus aureus, Bacillus cereus, and viruses like norovirus, rotavirus, and CMV. In the category of invasive or inflammatory diarrhea, we have Seminella, Shigella, Enterohemorrhagic E. coli, Campylobacter jejuni, and Entamoeba histolytica. So if you want more information on other infectious diseases or gastrointestinal conditions, please check out my playlists on those topics. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. And also, please check out my Patreon page where I have exclusive lessons on there as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.